Good morning. My name is uh, Vivian Lowry Derrick from the Bridges Institute. I want to thank the panelists for really very, very substantive and provocative, um, thoughtful presentations. My question has to do with education, going back to what Howard French um, asked about. And Amadou Sai um, talked about the linkage between education, programming, and tech, and um, the technology revolution. Uh, we know that education is the linchpin for development in terms of labor force participation, girls' education, agricultural development, and political participation. But the challenge is that 70% of African primary school leavers do not go on to secondary school. So my question is, what do we do with that 70% bulge? Do we invest, do we make a priority of investing in vocational education or agricultural um, education? So I'd like for the panel to um, address that, what I think is the most important issue facing Africa going forward. Thank you. Uh, sure. Um, I don't think it's, in, thank you very much for the question. I think that uh, there, um, my, my own quick sense of this is that it's not an either or, uh, that um, given what we've talked about in terms of urbanization and general population growth rates and the need for employment, Africa has to do all of those things. Um, I think that um, there's, we're, we've reached a point in time where basically every African country should have universal primary education enrollment across both genders. That there's just basically no reason for that not to happen. And, and the United States and other partners of, of, of the continent should, should make this a, a real primary focus of policy. Um, um, I, I focus in a lot of my own work and, and reporting and thinking, uh, partly because of my, my own vocation, uh, at the other end of the tunnel on higher education. And Ambassador Thomas Greenfield spoke, I thought, very interestingly early uh, this morning about how a generation ago African universities were producing truly stellar talent, uh, academically speaking, and how they're across many, uh, I again hesitate to speak too broadly about the continent, but in many countries, um, uh, the university landscape has been devastated. Interestingly, we see, have seen, this is a little known fact, that Africans have the highest educational attainment of any immigrant group in the United States. We speak, it's very f famously about Asian tiger moms and the like. Africans perform the best in the American university environment of any group. Um, we need, that, that's, that's not to Africa's detriment, but we need to figure out a way as partners of the continent to help revitalize um, the African higher education environment. Um, the, the question, the excellent question that was posed was what do we do in the middle? And I don't have a, a great answer to that, but vocational school and agricultural school seem to me to be tremendously important. I think as an incentive to get people to stay in school and to pursue education all the way through to university potentially, they have to see um, a, a potential employment payoff at the end of the line. Um, and. I don't, this is above my pay grade, I don't have all the answers for how to make that happen, but this is, in other words, this is an integral picture that we have to think about with different pieces to the puzzle, all of which are important. Yeah, uh, I'll try to steal what I think Amadou may say, uh, which is, I think that there's some opportunities, or at least I'm excited by the opportunities that such things like massively organized online courses, MOOCs, may offer for the continent. Um, I know that in the American system, uh, a lot of professors and universities have, have had a mixed result with it, but I, I am curious on whether there can be a way to find a burden sharing with African countries on this, ways to perhaps think about where you want to focus the intervention, how to get other professors into classrooms, how to use mobile apps to deal with things like enumeracy or literacy. It's not a 100% solution, but I wonder if there's ways to partner with African countries so that we can, you know, either at the nation state level or at the subnational level, think about where the African countries' resources are best for education and how the global community can help augment or complement them. I mean, it's a difficult question, um, uh, definitely. 
and I, I would agree that I would agree that um, um, we need we need everything from primary education all the way to vocational to uh, higher education. Uh, but one thing uh, I've noticed is, you know, in in, in many African countries. Uh, in our rush to really meet the Millennium Development Goals. Sometimes we have, um, you know, tried to have these um, primary, um, universal primary education and so on, but at the cost of uh, uh, the quality. So the quality of education sometimes, even for primary, has gone down in many countries. But I, I, I think at the end, maybe the only uh, thing I can say is just to have a holistic approach. Uh, I mean, I doubt that I have seen in many countries a minister of education sitting with a minister of industry, sitting with a minister, uh, you know. You need to really think forward and see where the gaps are. And in, 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 uh, also at have the business community play a bigger role. Uh, there's a lot of learning that can happen in businesses. Yeah. Just very, very quickly, Vivian, good question. Nice to see you. Um, it's, it's, it's a great question. We went from a period where there was really no investment in primary school or secondary school. Uh, fortunately, over the last couple of decades, there has been the investment of primary school and enrollments have gone up. Now we need to shift exactly as you point out to secondary uh, education and beyond. But I think the whole model, frankly, of, of centralized state government-run education in the capital city to service people all around the country has just not worked very well uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, frankly, and in developing countries around the world. And we at USAID and others, frankly, perpetuate that model that has never made much sense and we would never put up with it, frankly, in the United States. Uh, so I think there needs to be some very creative rethinking of the education system with a big agenda on improving quality and, and, and making those investments to improve uh, the quality and, and access to those that are left out, again, particularly girls, uh, in, in the years to come. But it's going to take a real rethinking of, of the basic model. Oh, and there's a great report, frankly, that Brookings just put out, Rebecca Winthrop and her team on education in developing countries. Just came out a few weeks ago that you should look at. <laughs>